Okay. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Course Creator Community Podcast. I'm super excited because we've got an absolute weapon with us uh, this week. She's an expert when it comes to anything launching your thing live, to be honest. So, you know, you got a, a course you want to sell. There's a few steps in place. We need to make sure that we we fit, fill our funnel, right? How can we get people to actually know what we do, get them in our Facebook group, get them in our email list? Kat's going to give us some really cool organic tips on how we can do that. Uh, but that's only half the party, right? Right? We can fill our email list, fill our Facebook group, but if we're not making any sales and not making any money, it's it's a big waste of time. So this person is also going to teach us how to sell as well. So without further ado, let me introduce you to Ms. Kat Burns. Kat, how are you? I'm good. Thanks, John. I thanks so much for having me on. And um, yeah, it's so nice to meet your, your members as well and like hear about what everybody's up to. Um, yeah, so, so just kind of going back a step. So I'm a tech expert. And live launch specialist, I, I work with mostly female entrepreneurs with getting, um, you know, lead generation organically and um, selling out their either their coaching or their um, packages or their one on one services or their courses um, using live launches. So, yeah. So firstly, I'm going to talk about um, organic traffic. So, okay. yes. So I was just going to kind of start off with, you know, so obviously there's 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 two ways of, of generating leads. Um, it, it can get quite complicated when you go down the route of paid advertising. So I'm not going to talk about that today. Um, that's not my expertise, but I'm going to talk about organic traffic and how do you get leads, um, qualified leads into your nurture zone. So the first thing I would start off with is figure out what your nurture zone is. When I say nurture zone, um, this means, so it's either your email list um, or your Facebook group. Um, I can't really think of, I mean, you know, getting people onto your social media or your Instagram is fine, but what I'm talking about is actually getting a container mm -hmm. for, um, for those people so that you, you know, you actually have them in a place almost that they, I know this sounds awful, but, but they can't um, escape in the sense of um, you want a container where, you know, people can continue to get to know you, where you can feed them content um, and a Facebook group is a perfect place to do that. Um, as well as an email list. So I would recommend doing both. Um, some people don't like Facebook groups, but um, you know, if you're gonna do it somewhere else, I, you know, I'm not, you know, obviously some of the other places you can do groups on LinkedIn, um, but I haven't used that myself. So I specialize well, I in haven't, group. I have and they suck. I if I can give you really? one. Really? Oh well that's good to know. <laughs> don't use LinkedIn groups. Yeah, I think LinkedIn groups is a bit dead, right? It's not really got that same vibe of Facebook group. What what I've found Facebook with what is, I found with LinkedIn groups is like yep. they don't come up in the feed, right? Right. And they and they don't sort of recommend them to you. You know, on Facebook, you're on yep. Facebook, a little group pops up, hey, you should join this, and yep. you see things come up in your feed from groups you're in. LinkedIn yep. doesn't have that. The only way to find a group is to search the name. And then the only way to see what's going on in the group is to actually go and visit that group and, and scroll through. Who's got time to do that? No. Not no. people on LinkedIn anyway. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. I mean, the whole point of a Facebook group is basically it bypasses the whole like complicated algorithm on Facebook of people not seeing your posts, right? Because as soon as someone joins your group, you've got a container to hold them in and they will automatically see, receive notifications in, if they're in your group. So it will ping them every time. And I don't know if they're changing that, I hope not, but it will ping them every time you know you post something in the group, every time you go live in the group. So it just means you've got like an audience of you know, your ideal kind of clients that you can you know, keep nurturing and keep in contact with, okay? So um, the main thing is to have your container and then the email list as well, because if for some reason, and Facebook does this all the time, they just suddenly change tact and they're like, no, actually, we're going to prioritize pages again or, you know, whatever. Um, you don't want to lose all that hard work that you've put into developing your group and building up your numbers. So, I mean, you do still want to be getting email addresses as much as possible so that if anything happens, you've still got all those contacts that you've spent all that time building up. Okay. So, um, you know, and this is where having a, you know, lead magnets is great, you know, in terms of actually converting those people into being on your email list. Um, and we can talk about that in a minute about like lead magnets and, and, and how that whole thing works. But, but the main thing for your Facebook group, and this is the thing is like, what I do is just reaching out organically to people on Facebook. I'm mostly going to talk about Facebook today. Um, 
but I would say do a bit of research into your ideal clients and where they mm -hmm. hang out because there's no point in you creating a Facebook group if you know that your audience doesn't spend time on there, okay? So, I mean, most people are on Facebook, so it's, it's pretty sturdy, like it's pretty good, you know, as, um, you know, a place to, to find your audience, but do that research on your client and figure out where, you know, do they hang out on more on Instagram? Do they hang out on LinkedIn? Do they just like not go on social media at all? In which case, you not, you know, you need to find another option for them, you know, like your own membership site, for example, or, or whatever, right? Um, but yeah, so Facebook groups, um, they also have, um, you know, some good features where you can actually, you know, build in membership questions. So, you know, if you're going to have a Facebook group, there's a few things that I, um, I would suggest in the way that you set it up so that it's built for growth and that you're actually capturing your leads as they come into your group, okay? Um, so are you guys, do you want me to kind of put dive into that now or do you want me to? Yeah. Let, let's go. How do we get people in this group? So let's say we've got a group, you know, yeah. we've got hundred people in there, but we're not growing it. How do we get more people in, into this group? Yeah. Yeah. So when you're taking the organic route, what you're wanting to do basically is a increase your visibility online. So, you know, be posting, you know, to your profile, be using stories and anything right now that is live content, video, um, stories, even kind of like reels, um, you know, that they're using a lot on Instagram and TikTok, but you can even just repost that into your Facebook, okay? Anything like video is gonna get more engagement. Um, and now, when you are posting, you do need to add call to actions. And this is basically, you know, getting people to engage with your content so you can follow up with them and make sure you are actually, you know, not just liking responses, but commenting. You need to be active on online. You know, you need to be interacting with people. Um, so the other thing is mostly what I'm doing with, with my clients is, you know, you need to be joining other Facebook groups that where your clients hang out. Okay. So if, for example, you are selling to horse people, um, like that was their example before, and I'm sorry, I can't remember your name. Trish, that would be Trish. Um, Trish, yeah. So for example, with Trish, I'll use that example. So, you know, what would be a really fantastic thing for her to do is to firstly, you know, make sure that your profile is a mm -hmm. business, uh, business related profile, because what you're wanting is to have, say, a banner profile, or sorry, a banner image of your group, okay? And link in the comments they join my group it's kind of important when you're networking online that people can kind of click on your profile and be like oh she does that you know like so when you if you look at mine if anyone goes onto facebook and has a look at mine you'll see that i you know i have a nice photo it doesn't have to be i mean you know i have a kind of professional slash approachable photo you know make sure you like not it's not just like faceless like make sure it's you and your face and don't hide behind you know like you know, a group photo or whatever, because no one will be able to interact with you if they don't really know who you are. And the other thing you'll notice on mine is, you know, I've got a nice banner image that I did in Canva, which is free, by the way, so you can just completely create your own. It's super easy to use. Um, and yeah, and then upload your Facebook cover, which is just basically the same as your Facebook group cover, okay? And it is, it can include, the banner image can include, you know, come and join my, my free group, you know, whatever the name of the group is, okay? So it's important you have that. So when you're networking and getting to know people, they can immediately see who you are and what you do. The other thing is the bio, you know, actually having, you know, what you do in your bio professionally, like in your business um, with a link as well. You can use something like Bitly, which is a short man. So because it's, it's, you know, the characters are limited on the bio. So you do have to be a bit clever in the way that you use it. Um, you have to keep it quite concise. But you can use a bit.ly link or a short note or something like that with a, a either like so again the call to action you know you don't want to have people looking at your um profile and being like okay cool and then just going off you want a call to action wherever you can place it so a comment in the photo um on your bio description you can also set a feature image as well if you've got a lead magnet with a link up in the comments to your lead magnet okay this is all gonna increase your conversion rate like when you're networking online okay 
So then what you want to be doing is joining up with Facebook. Let's, let's even stop yeah. there for a sec because yeah. I think there's some really good info there and I'll just make I'll just summarize and make sure everyone's got it as well. Sure. Everyone watching live, does all that make sense so far? What Kat's saying? Just say yes or no down in the comments. I'll break it down a, a little bit more and we may even do a bit of a, a screen share actually. I know if you're listening later on the podcast, you know, this may not uh, make sense, but we'll just quickly run through it here. So I've actually got um, Kat's profile up here. So yeah. we have a look here and what we're going to say is let's say Kat's networking in different groups, right? She goes in different groups. She, um, let's say she replies to someone comment. Someone's like, oh, who's this cat person replying to my comment? Let me click on her bio and, and see what's going on. They open it up here. The first thing they're going to see is the banner here, you know, killer live launches. Oh, she does live launches. You know what? She might be the sort of person I want to network with, you know, click friend request. Some people may want a little bit more info. The banner is not enough. If you have a look at Kat here, her bio says, want to kill a launch, join the wait list now. And then there's a bitly link there. Now, I'm sure if I go there, it's going to be a lead magnet. I'm going to have to enter my email in. So uh, there's a few good things going on there. Firstly, now, even if I don't add Kat as a friend, she might still get me on her list. I might say, I don't want to friend request this person, but hold on. I want to get on this, this wait list. You know, let me my, enter my details in here. And this bio section, it's very small. You've probably maxed it out there, right? Cat, you I don't know, think that's, I really, yeah, like that's the thing, it's down to the line, right? You know, like yeah. two or three kind of like uh, c characters sometimes that you're playing with, you know, so you have to kind of get a bit creative with, you know, but often, even if you don't, like here, I'm, I'm, I'm promoing something that I'm launching at the moment, right? So I've changed, yeah. like, that's the thing as well, it yeah. doesn't have to be static, guys, it can yeah. change. So if you are, you know, promoting your group, then you have your link to your group and you have your banner image to be your group, right? Then and if you're suddenly going into launch mode and you're like, I've got a free workshop or a webinar happening and you change out your banner image and your link, right? You, you, you know, and then it notifies everybody as well that's on your friends mm, list and they see your, your new and improved image, right? Which is a good thing, you know? Yeah. I mean, you have to get over this thing of like, that's the scary thing sometimes is getting over being visible online yeah. and people good seeing what you're doing. Even, and I'll, I'll piggyback up a couple things there. Mm -hmm. I, this bio thing here, if you mm -hmm. change it, Facebook gives you the option, you know, hey, do you want to update this on your feed or whatever? Yeah. You can say yes to that. So if you've got a new thing coming out, here's just another sneaky way to get a, another post in. And I yeah. believe these things are actually quite visible. Because if you, and especially the best one is your profile pic. You change your profile pic and everyone sees it, you know? But I think Facebook's a little bit more open where if you change this, they're going to show it to people. Mm -hmm. uh, and just, I want to quickly touch base. Does everyone know what a bit.ly link is? Just comment yes or no down in the box um, there. Because if, it, if this was your website, you know, hey, www.fitnesseducationonline.com.au, it's not going to fit there, you know? If it's, um, you know, um, John O'Petrohillos slash New Zendler courses slash freebie, it's not going to fit there, you know? And even that, Kat's got, you know, um, bit.ly slash 38Q8, a few other things there. You could even just get that to three or four letters if you can, you know, if it's, um, if the combinations are available. And then the other thing Kat's referring to here is the feature image. Now, if we click here, that's another way to get into Kat's group as well. And this is one that's a little bit more hidden. You know, I think most people sort of understand, okay, there's a banner, there's a, a thing here, but this feature photo is another good bit of, of real estate there. So I just yeah. wanted to piggyback off that. Um, that all makes sense. I've just got a message here from Rachel. I've seen Bitly, but doesn't know what it is. Um, so we'll cover that later, Rachel, I think. But simplified version, it just allows you to, whatever website you have, you can just change it to, um, you know, bitly.com slash whatever you want. And then it's a lot shorter, right? So you can fit yeah. it in those places there. Trish has also said, so your profile is your personal page, not your business page. Yes, so long story short, Trish, the business page just sucks for the algorithm. So you could do this on your business page, but no one's going to see it. So you're better off doing your personal profile. And also, as Kat's going to get to in a sec, when we start networking, you need to network with your personal profile. You can't get in, half the groups won't let you in with a page. And most people aren't going to reply if a business page messages them. But if it's a person, it's a lot more um, personable there. Like, like me and you, Trish, see how we connected? personal to personal, right? That's usually easier. So awesome. Yep. Just wanted to piggyback there, Kat. Now I think you were going to get into, that's great. We've got this set up, but now how do we meet people? Now we join these groups. Yeah. How do we connect with these people without being sleazy or, or spammy? Yes, exactly. Yeah. So definitely, yeah. Going back to that, it does, you know, you do need to use your personal page. You know, I think people are just over 
you know, I mean, being online is all about, you know, personal connection these days and building relationships. I mean, it's, it's a similar to going to, you know, a networking party in person, right? You, you kind of, you know, you're like, you introduce yourself and you have a conversation first about them and what they do before you start pitching, right? So it's the same, you know, it's the same concept when you go online, you are just looking to meet people, you're looking to network, you're looking to ask them questions about what they do, you know, before you jump straight to like, oh, did you know I have a course? Like, you know what I mean? Like it's, you know, you just got to kind of imagine yourself as if you were at, a, you know, an in-person event, you know, would you just like go up to someone and just like <laughs> cold pitch them? You know, probably not, you know. so Some people do and I ignore them. You go to a networking yes. <laughs> event and someone just comes and hands you their business card straight away. That's a yeah. surefire sign for me yeah. not to do business with you. It's, it's quite rude. You know, like we yeah. all get them. We all get those spammy messages. Someone adds us on Facebook and then they're immediately like, hey, you know, like I've got this program coming up and you need to be there. And you're just like, no, because I don't need that for a start because it's about like something that I'm completely not interested in. Um, and, you know, I don't even, you know, it's all just very automated and it's not personal, right? Mm -hmm. So we're going for the personal connection thing, right? So what we're doing is we're reaching out to people in the groups we're trying to you know add value all the time so it's always about you know you are a, you have to realize that you are an expert in your field whether that's you know horses or you know whatever it is that you're you know passionate about and you're developing your course about right so when you you know be quite strategic when you're in those groups you're not just chit chatting you know which is fine as well it depends if you have time to do that right but you are being strategic and it is actually quite good sometimes to when you post you know when you actually comment on someone's post to be like hey, I'm a such and such expert or I, you know, I specialize in X um, and, you know, these, this is my response. You know, this is how I would answer your question, right? Because then, because a lot of people I see as well out there, they are commenting on people's posts and answering their questions about, you know, something that is your area of expertise, but they don't actually say who they are and what they do. So it's less, you know, it's more engaging if you kind of can introduce yourself as well. That's it. And so, even, I feel it's powerful if you can, yeah, because you're positioning yourself there. It's like if you just comment, even if you know what you're talking about, they might yeah. think, oh, who's this idiot, you know? But if yeah. it's like, hey, you know, I'm a, I'm a parenting coach and I've got yes. 20 years experience in parenting, here's what I found with all of my clients. Yes. All of a sudden, you're not saying, hey, here's what... It, and it's, it's, I think there's also a difference if you say your clients as well, where it's yeah. like, hey, here's what I do. Yeah, it's okay. But I'm the expert. Here's what I get all my clients to do when they've had amazing success. You yes. know, then it's like, okay, I'm going to listen to this person. Yes, it does. And I'm, I'm going to add this person as a friend. at a different level, right? It pitches you as an expert rather than just Joe blogs down the street. It's like, well, who, you know, who are you? Why do you know <laughs> mm. anything, right? Um, so, and the other thing is, guys, you can actually save these as like little scripts, you know, either on your phone, mm. in your note, in your notes, or on your computer, depending on how you're going to be using it, right? So if you have like a little script in a sense, you know, like, hi, I'm so, you know, I'm so-and-so and I'm a such and such. And, you know, I'd love to answer that question or something. And then, you know, like fill in the response, right? Um, you know, it's just time savers like that, you know, that that help you a lot. So you're not like reinventing the wheel every time. And if you found, you've, you know, you're doing a post and it's got high engagement, you know, make sure you write that down, whatever that was, mm -hmm. you know, that formula and, and keep using it. So, so one thing is commenting on other people's posts and positioning yourself as an expert. Um, and the other thing is actually posting in those groups, okay? So you do have to be a little bit careful when you're posting in other people's groups. You do need to check what are the promo rules because, you know, depending on the group, um, you know, they have different rules, but they often have promo days where you can post your links and you can, you know, you can add a freebie or you can, you know, um, promo an upcoming, you know, offer or, you know, workshop, okay? So it's often good if you like note that down as well. It's like, okay, well, these are the groups, you know, I would literally make a list of say five groups, um, five to 10 groups where you know that your target audience hang out, right? And look at which ones it would be, it is about being strategic because you want to, you want to be using your time in the best way possible. So you want to be targeting the groups that A, you get good engagement and B, mm -hmm. There are people in there that have the money. And I mean, you know, I'm, I'm kind of being a bit straight up here, but, mm. you know, are these people like kind of influencers? Are they, you know, are they at a stage that they actually want to invest in themselves and are willing to pay money? Because there's no point in marketing and promoting to people, for example, in a free parenting group that 
you know, it's just finding that that correct niche. Yes, of course you want to help everyone, but you need to, you know, to begin with, you need to be making money in your business before you can do anything, help anyone, you know? So, you know, you need to be strategic about choosing the groups. And, and this is, you know, take some time sometimes to be like finding out what, what it's talking about getting quality leads here. I'm talking about not just quantity, but quality, okay? So, you know, finding the right groups where your target audience hang out, but they've also, you know, got the actual money to spend um, and know that, okay, well, posting engaging content in there, maybe introduce yourself with a photo. Um, and then a few days later, you know, it's, it's actually the question type posts get more responses. Mm -hmm. So like introducing myself and like, hey, share your link below, you know, this is, I'm a so-and-so coach and, you know, here's a link to, to my group, you know, share your links below so that we can connect, you know, that kind of thing. I know it sounds a wee bit spammy and you might, you know, you might get tons of responses under there, but this is kind of like the inside scoop now, guys, on how I, how I work with my clients basically to get leads into the groups, okay? So we kind of work together. So they'll be posting in these groups, for example, and anyone that comments underneath it, I would be following up with. So I'd be adding them as a friend and I would be sending them an outreach message with um you know a link to my group okay so that's how you do it on a kind of like more systematic scale but even if you were just like um you know anyone that you interacted with you literally send a follow-up message you know mm -hmm. it's like you know you can't expect people to magically know what you do and magically like join your group because <laughs> you haven't like actually had a conversation with them so you know, you can then um, again, set, like save a templated message. And it is about making it personal, not kind of like, you know, just spamming people. And there's a bit of an art form with this, but you know, I would just say something like, hi, you know, name. Um, thank you so much for posting on my comment, you know, my um, post in this group. Um, you know, I, you know, I have a such and such group for these kinds of people. I would love it if you wanted to join and drop the link. You know, and then don't keep pestering them, you know, like obviously if they don't want to join, that's absolutely fine. Um, you know, but you will find there will be people that want to that just immediately click on the link. We all do, let's face it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if there's a link, we just click it. It's kind of like human nature, you know. Yes, so yes. click on the link and that's when they go to your group. Love it. I'll leave, well, let's spend a minute there. I'll just piggyback off that. So we've got a question from Julia. Um, the yeah. problem is many questions, uh, many groups don't only know that now. That's true. So there, I think there's a few parts to that. Firstly, um, be careful on the group. But also, secondly, it, it doesn't need to be a comment your business link below, right? It could be, and there's many different ways and many different forms, but it, it may be something as, as simple as, I'm just going to give an example here. Let's say... Um, Let's say I'm not happy with, I'm just going to use a course creator uh, thing as an example, because everyone in here is course creators. And I'm like, hey guys, I'm using um, New Zenla. I'm not a hundred percent comfortable with it. You know, he's, he, I'm thinking of going over to Kajabi. You know, is anyone, I'm, I'm curious, what is, has anyone gone from New Zenla to Kajabi or does anyone use Kajabi? What are your thoughts? You know, it could be some sort of question like that. That's not a direct, um, you know, comment your link below, but just something yeah. that's going to get people commenting. Now, Catherine's also mentioned it's an art form as well. I wouldn't do that in a course creation group because mm -hmm. I feel if I'm sell if I'm promoting a course creation group, because it's just too competitive, right? But yeah. maybe I could go in like an email marketing group. There's a yeah. group for, you know, that, that gives different tips on email marketing. And be like, hey, curious, who's used this course to this course, right? Whatever, 20 people comment. I could then, you know, add them as, as friends and then say, hey, you know, just curious how long you've been using it. What do you think? Yada, yada, yada. Awesome. Hey, by the way, I've actually got a Facebook group for course creators. You got a course, so I'd love to see you in there. You know, yeah. I feel that's not spammy, right? Because it's like, it's not a direct competition with the group. I've And providing that I'm actually thinking about that. I wouldn't post that if I wasn't thinking about it, right? But I yeah. feel no matter what, whatever niche you're in, there's some question that you genuinely want to know the answer to. You can post that, you know, you, you get people commenting there and then it's yeah. a, a less sleazy way of interacting. Like you could go in and just randomly add uh, random people and maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. Um, but at least with this strategy here, it's like I've got some sort of connection with this person already. They've asked a question. I'll, I'll add them as a friend. If they accept, then if, if they don't accept, great. They don't accept. If they do yeah. accept. Okay. It's I can, you know, um, gently follow up with that person and then judging on their reaction, see if it's worth in, inviting them or not. So 
it's a lot smoother. Is that the summary of, of that system there? Yeah, I mean, like I say, it's a bit of a delicate balance and you yeah. just you just have to kind of like, it's trial and error a little bit to begin yeah. with, you know, where you're like, oh, can I do this? And, um, you know, and just finding your groove and finding your wording and the things that work for you. But just think of it as you are providing value. You yeah. are going to be providing value if they join your group. You're not just, part, you know, cold selling people. Mm. Um and you are doing it with the right intention, you know? So it's not a, it's, it's yeah, you've got to remember that you want to help people, right? So, um, yeah, so I think, you know, there are some powerful ways to, to basically, you know, get high engaging content out to other groups. And yeah, it is a bit of an art form. So um, I'm happy to chat with anyone offline about that and different examples, I guess, of, of things that I've seen that have worked and that, that don't work. <laughs> mm. But um, yeah, that's one way. And the other thing is just to be completely transparent and upfront and, and, mm. and message the, the admin of the group, you know, and say, hey, um, you know, this is the thing as well. We don't actually sell ourselves and what we do to people, you know, mm. um, and actually say, hey, I'm an expert in, in um, parenting. And I would love to just offer a free training for your group. You know, like kind of like what me and Jono have done today, right? Like I posted on my page, I was like, hey, I would like a speaking gig. Like I would like to talk about X, Y, Z. Anyone, you know, want me to do it alive in their group? And Jono was like, yeah, you know, so that's the thing is putting yourself out there. Like public speaking is probably one of the number one ways of getting new leads either to you. And it's all about where you send them next. Like today, you know, we posted my group. So, you know, that was my way of actually, you know, being completely upfront and honest here. That's my way of capturing you guys into my funnel <laughs> in a sense, right? Because I've been upfront. I like, you know, I've shared where I want you to go after this course. Okay. You must do that. Like when you do a public speaking gig or you're doing a training or, or you're talking in anyone else's group, make sure that you actually capture them. Either you say, you know, I've got a freebie, you know, which is a free guide. Um, you know, I'll pop the link below, um, you know, things like that. So, you know, public speaking is a, is a fantastic way of getting new leads and getting yourself out there. So yeah, so going out to those groups, because that's ready-made audience, like jono has got a group of 2000 people, you know, he's got, you know, I don't know how many people listening on podcasts, right? So that's the kind of thing that I would be encouraging you to do is to get out there. I mean, and you know, and network. So yeah, add friends, you know, have conversations with people because you just never know, like, especially if they um, work in your field, or like you say, you can join up with people that are kind of similar to you, but you're complimentary, you know? So if you, you know, like, for example, if I go into Jono's group, there might be some questions that I can answer and help people with um, that's complimentary to Jono, which I'm not competing with Jono. Do you know what I mean? Because we're kind of aligned in our businesses and we're serving the same community but we're not competing with each other in terms of our offering. So, you know, those, those, those are just a couple of examples, I guess, of how you do the organic uh, lead generation. And, you know, so getting them into your Facebook group and also, you know, promoting your um, lead magnet. So, yeah, so I would, when you join these groups, just make a note of the promo rules, if there are mm -hmm. any. If you're concerned at all about, you know, check, you know stepping on someone's toes, just reach out to the, the Facebook group owner and just be up front and say, this is what I do. And I've, I've got this free guide. I'd really love to share it with your audience. You know, would you, you know, would you like that? You know, I'll, I'll give so it. you don't I'll have to be like, <laughs> yeah, well, I'll pick, out like behind the scenes, you know, yeah, um, I'll, I'll because you might have some off. valuable content for, for that audience. Bang on. I'll, I'll piggyback off that on a, on a couple of different ways. Cause I think what can be intimidating and uncomfortable for some people is maybe, you know, oh, I don't know if I feel comfortable adding random people as friends and DMing yeah. them. What if they don't want me to DM? What if the group admin um, gets upset at me and then blocks me for the group? It's a super gray area, right? Yeah. And there's some things where like, you know, some people will block, hey, you added a friend and DM'd a member, gone, you know, you're out of the group. Other groups are like, that's oh, okay. As long as you didn't, as long as you, you know, ask them first or, you know, you added friends or whatever, it's okay. So it is super gray. There's not like a right or wrong. So it is that art form. But even if you are concerned, Kat's just mentioned some really good strategies to, to build your list without any DMing. Like if you DM, great. If you don't, hey, here's some other cool things you can do just by, you know, being active in these groups and having my profile set up. People are going to, you know, friend request me and, and go to my group from there. Um, yeah. And then even if you don't send that DM, even if you just maybe sent a friend request, don't even need to follow up. You know, it's probably preferred if you do, but even if you don't, if you're doing a lot of these other little things, right. 
it might not matter because you might add someone as a friend. You don't need to send them a DM. But if every day or every couple of days you're posting on your personal Facebook profile, hey, got this free training in my group, you know, who's in, comment below if you want to go or whatever. You know, those people that added you as a friend, oh, she does this. You know what? I might um, join that group and then go from there, yada, yada, yada. All right. So I think that's a cool one as well. Uh, and then even as, as Kat mentioned, you might add these people as friends and then you, you don't even have to post on your feed, you know, hey, join my group. I think Kat did that. I think she said, hey, join my group. I'm like, ah, I don't want to join the group. But then she was like, um, hey, I'll speak at your group. I'm like, I need a speaker, you know? Yeah, I'm going to hit you up. Yeah. And now I'm going to join her group with, you know, at least five, 10 other people from my group anyway. So it doesn't just have to be uh, teamwork is, is the more you can leverage someone else's audience, the better. Like, yeah, you can go and just add friends and DM and maybe they do, maybe they don't. Or, you know, you can offer your services to speak in that person's group and you get a whole heap of people at once in there. And I just want to piggyback off the group admin a bit as well too, because it's always beneficial to make friends with that group admin. So I've, I've got two Facebook groups, right? Um, the course creator community and also fitness education online. And even I'm a little bit gray with my rules, like, obviously, there's things where, if, oh, no, actually, I'm super gray. Like, if someone goes in there that I don't know and just tries to sell straight away, block and remove, right? But if that person's my friend, I might give him a warning, you know? I might be like, hey, cat, actually, don't allow that, you know? Is it cool if you, you remove that post? Because we're friends, right? So I feel like if you're friends with the group admin, um, you'll get a little bit of leeway. And if you accidentally step over the line, if you don't know the group admin, they're just going to block you and ban you straight away. But if you know them, you're friends with them, they may give you a little bit of leeway. And I, I'm not saying toe the line and be dodgy and purposely break the rules, but be friends with a group admin. But it doesn't hurt to be friends with a group admin. You know, no difference to it doesn't, doesn't hurt to be friends with your local police officer or with your local, you know, um, politician or whatever, right? So I think mm -hmm. that's key there. And I think also, if you can get that person to give value or if if you can give value to that person first. So let's use me and Kat as an example now. Let's say there's someone else in my group who I was sort of friends with, but they broke my rules. Eh, I'm still probably going to block them if it was bad enough. But if it was Kat, I'm like, well, she's giving me free training. Ah, I'll let that one slide, you know? So I think it's always um, it, to your advantage to make friends with that group admin. Um, mm -hmm. And then whether it's you offering them value or whether you can say to them, hey, I've got a podcast or I've got a Facebook group. I would love to have you on there. And you yeah. give them the opportunity first and nine out of 10 times, they're probably going to offer you the return anyway. Hey, do you want to do the same on, on my group there? So I just wanted to touch on that. Um, but Hey, Kat, let's move to the selling side of things now. So let's yeah. say, great. We've got some really good strategies to organically grow our Facebook group. We've mm -hmm. got this Facebook group, you know, we're posting some value. We're posting some interaction, but we're not making any dollars. How mm -hmm. do we make some dollars and, and make some money off a, off a live launch, which I believe is your specialty. Yes, definitely. So the, yeah, there's all different models and ways of doing things on the online space and it can get really crazy and overwhelming. Um, but I just specify on live launches. So what that means is it's things like, like I said earlier, so it's a webinar, a challenge, a masterclass, a workshop or whatever, right? So I, you know, I mean, it definitely, so this is like a, a strategy for basically selling. So what you're trying to do is you're trying to build momentum in your group, okay, and give them a um, an offer. And this is a kind of funny one to get your head around, right? But you're trying to create the urgency mm -hmm. for them to buy at a certain point in time. So that's the point of having a launch mm -hmm. um, rather than something that's what they call evergreen, which is like they can buy it at any point at any time, right? And that's often quite automated in the online space um, because, you know, it's just open for enrollments all the time. Okay. But that's kind of like much more advanced, um, and not my area of specialty. So I won't talk about that today, but, but basically what I do a lot with clients is, um, help them to launch through either like a webinar or a, um, a multi-day workshop or challenge. Okay. So there's like pros and cons of both. And it often just depends on your personal preference as well, because, you know, a, a challenge like a three day challenge or a five day challenge can be very effective depending on what audience, you know, or what subject you're in. Um, but, um, you know, it can be quite exhausting to actually pull off because you remember you having to do all the trainings every day, engage with the group, there's all the kind of pre work and post work, you know, emails, you know, registrations, all that kind of stuff, right? Um, it, they can be very effective for like a big bang launch of, for example, if you're just about to launch your new program or your new course, 
Um, and I suggest I quite like three day challenges at the moment. I just feel like that's kind of a sustainable like yeah, thing. Yeah. Like, yeah. Even for the user, I'm not like doing a four day out. challenge. You know, but well, even for the user, like someone's doing a five day challenge. Yeah. I know I'm not participating for five days. Yeah. But a three day challenge, you know what? I think I can do three days. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Because you have to realize people are quite overwhelmed in, you know, with mm. social media as well. So um, you know, yeah, they may I not think, be able to stay for I, like a 14 day kind I, of I challenge. Think, I think I'm some already people signed pull it up really well. So well, I, I think um, I'm already I'm signed up for like three of them at the moment and heavy hitters. I mean Tony Robbins one, yeah. I mean Russell Brunson's one, and yeah. I log in for a day or two and then give up, you know? So I feel I if you're trying to compete with them and do like yeah. a 14 day one and they're struggling to do it, you know? Tough. Yeah, for sure. And that's why sometimes I just quite like webinars because yeah. it's quite simple. And, you know, so what you're doing with a webinar is you're just having like 45 minutes of one hour presentation or live talk on a certain subject. Um, and that leads into, you know, a sale of your course, or at least just awareness of the course that you're selling or your, your, your program, right? Um, so I, you know, there's, there's, I think there's different ways of doing it. And it all depends on your personal preference and your time, like how much time you've got, to, you know, to do this, whether if you're working in a full time job, then probably not like maybe, you know, one hour webinar is much more doable <laughs> for you. Um, so yeah, so the whole point of doing the live event, right, is basically to give your audience exposure to you. Um, so they can just see what an amazing, amazing person you are and how knowledgeable you are. Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, they kind of get used to having your support, you know, for those that period of time. And by the end, they're like, oh, hold on, like, I can't like live without you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that's yeah. the kind of experience that you're wanting to give people is just like, this is what it would be like to kind of to work with me, basically. Right. So that's the kind of like multi day uh, challenge kind of thing where you give a training every day there's homework there's like prizes you know there's all these kinds of things but sometimes I find simpler is better especially when you're doing it for the first time just you know and it is you know a learning process so don't expect that you're suddenly gonna like sell out your course for the first one it's just a learning process right but um, it's a fantastic way again of building your list um, and getting people into your group as well that's something you know so literally if you held a one hour webinar um, and posted it online, you know, to your contacts and in your group, you're, you know, you actually capture the email address on the registration form for your webinar. So it's another way to just build up your list, you know, through those live events. So, so it's like best case scenario, you make some sales, yeah. um, medium scenario, hey, you build your list as, as you yeah. did it, even worst case scenario, okay, at least these people uh, have some sort of trust in you. And yeah. they're like, because what, what I find a lot of bit when I run challenges and webinars as well, is a lot of people like, yeah, that's awesome. But you know what? I'm going to try and do it myself first. You know, with what I learned here, I'm going to try and do it myself. But thank you so much. It was awesome. They don't sign up. And then like yeah. a month later, I can't do this on my own. Jono signed yeah. me up for this program here. So I think yeah. obviously you want to make sales straight away because that's yeah. your benchmark. And I, I find me personally, if I don't, I guess, set a little bit of a goal and I'm too yeah. passive, you almost just get into the free teacher mode, you know? And it's yeah. like, oh, I don't care about sales. I'll just teach people for free. And then you don't really make any sales. But I find yeah. if you're like, you know what? I'm, I'm going to do my best to make as many sales as possible. But if yeah. I don't, hey, I still built my list. I gave some info. Some of these people may may come back later. Is that the, the summary there? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I normally would work with like, you know, have a target, you know, yeah. at least have something to aim towards. So I'd be like, okay, well, I want to make, you know, 10 sales of my program, you know, yeah. make it realistic, you know, not yeah. like crazy, but you know, have a target that you're, you're aiming for. And then, you know, it just gives you that kind of like momentum to actually yeah. actually pull the thing off, you know? Well, well question. Um, so yeah, so it does definitely like improve your visibility as well. If you're going to do an online event or a webinar or a challenge, you know, immediately people are like, oh, who's this? Like, you know, it, it can like push you yeah. over the edge in terms of if there's been context that you've been, you know what I mean? It actually positions you as an expert. If That's I, for it. example, host a webinar, you know, there might be a whole lot of people on my list that's on like, Who's oh, cat? Like, you know, I didn't even know she was doing this, you know. So yeah. um, yeah, so basically, yeah. So what you're doing with a with a live launch is getting people, as many people as you can, onto the live event with you. Mm. At the same time, be grabbing their email addresses so that you can um, have like an email sequence, mm. a follow-up email sequence that you know introduces your offer. And you know, it's all about kind of like having a time window that they can buy mm. in, you know. So whether that's five days or 10 days or whatever, you know, or a special, these are all kind of incentives, I guess, for 
people to buy at that particular time that need to be built into the offer. I mean, that's maybe a bit more complex, but um, you know, basically what we're trying to do is increase the urgency. So the offer is only available for a limited time. Yep. You know, we're also trying to increase, um, which sounds a bit funny, but we're, we're, we're kind of buying, we're going into people's um, FOMO. So it's like, you know, their fear of missing out. You know, if you don't join now, you know, this is all the amazing content that you're going to be missing out on. These are all the people that have signed up already, you know, and so people are like, oh, you know, like, I mean, these are just things, you know, it's not about being sleazy, but it is, you know, it is kind of like valuing your time and being like, well, yeah. I'm not, you know, I'm not offering this forever, you know, at this price, you know, the price, if you buy it in two months time, it's going to be more, you know, because of whatever, you know, as the demand increases, the price goes up. So, you know, it is kind of like, maybe you, you I mean, it's quite good, I find for webinars or challenges to offer a special for that mm. particular challenge, you know, to that audience. So, you know, if, you know, people have attended live, they might get a freebie or a bonus, you know, so it's always about incentivizing the, the, the show up, you know, because you don't, you are competing with a lot of, you know, people online. So, you know, and then, you know, basically kind of like as a thank you for, you know, being on your webinar, or even if people watch it on the replay, that's absolutely fine. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like a special offer for that particular audience at that time, you know, for your course. Um, and it is about building in value into your offer and bonuses. And, you know, so it's really, you know, I mean, it's a bit of an art form again. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And I mean, what's your experience with launching Jono and how do you kind of Okay, so I well, I like both options to be honest. Yeah. I like, but I've been doing this a long time, right? I got like thirty courses, um, you know, fifteen thousand Facebook group email list. So I've mm -hmm. got a, an advantage. But even then, but I'll, I'll even give a, a simplified version. My first business was in the fitness industry, mm -hmm. running twelve week boot camps. Right? right. Before that, I used to let people join at any time. And I found out pretty quickly, especially in fitness, but in most things in life, if you give someone um, permission to join at any time, or if you give someone the option to join at any time, you're giving them permission to never freaking join in their life. <laughs> because yeah. I'll do it, especially, I don't know if it's just fitness. I'll sign up next week. I'll sign up on Monday. Now I'll sign up next month. Now yeah. the year's halfway gone. I'll sign up in January. Uh, it's already first week of January. I'll sign up next year. It's just, they keep putting it off. As yeah. soon as I change that, two or 12 weeks, it was so much easier to sell because right. I had real urgency. It wasn't because, yeah. you know, online, a lot of it's fake these days anyway. Yeah, it is a bit so, fake, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sign up today and you get a thousand bucks off and then you sign up tomorrow and you still get it, you know? But yeah. like, it's, if you can make it real where yeah. that was, it was a 12 week challenge. You could only sign up in these two weeks here. And if you missed it, you had to make wait another 12 weeks. So yeah. I was taking that option away. You can't sign up tomorrow. It's either you sign up now or you stay overweight for 12 weeks. What would you prefer? Yeah. It's just so much more powerful there. So yeah. now that I'm more experienced in the course world, it's easier for me to do evergreen sort of stuff. I got traffic in that. Um, but for someone starting off, if you're having problems selling, I would recommend the live model. All right. And it probably, look, it probably is a bit more um, high pressure sort of thing. Uh, but you know, sometimes you got to do that to make the sale. So yeah. that's sort of my take. I think if you're starting off and you don't have a, a big audience and you're struggling to make sales, then yeah, use every trick in the book and you can use the, the urgency and the scarcity as well. You can say, Hey, I'm doing this four week program. And here's the thing, right? Even if you're doing a, a four week program, it doesn't necessarily need to be, we do a live Zoom call like this every Monday at 11 a.m. for four weeks. Maybe you've already got the content, but you just open up a module every week. It's still a, a four-week program, right? Um, and then I think you can use the, the urgency and the scarcity as well, you know, where it's like, or, or one or the other. If you can use both, great. But you can also be like, hey, you know, so here's the program. It's 500 bucks, um, but you guys are on the webinar, already spent an hour for me. First five people that register, I'm going to give you this discounted price here, but only the first five. So that yeah. way it's a bit of, um, what's that one? That's the scarcity side, right? And you can sort of play around and do one or the other, but I think it definitely gives you another uh, weapon in your arsenal to sell. Would you agree yeah. with that? Yeah, I mean, I think it is hard because obviously you want it to be authentic. Like I'm mm. not that kind of person. I'm like, I'm just going to make up a load of like, yeah. crap just to get sales, right? But, but think of it this way, like think of your time as valuable, right? Mm. And what is it that, that person? So the, the first thing is that 
on the webinar or the challenge, these people need to get a quick win from you. Mm. It's not just you talking on and on about your subject, right? It's for them. They should be able to walk away from that webinar with something, mm. you know, um, and then they've, they've come away with something of value, right? But what you're saying is at the end, look at this value that I've given you. And if you work with me, this is all the other value that I'm going to mm. bring to you, okay? Or the transformation that I'm going to create in your life. People buy on results and transformations. They mm. don't buy on just like, you know, um, what's in a program. So and education, yeah. they won't buy. It's very rare people will buy on education alone, you know? So okay, yeah. if I buy this, a result what am I going to get? The end of the day. So you yeah. do have to communicate the result that you're giving people, right? But this is something that I've seen work really well. It's like, offering your time so offering a one-on-one session mm. you know for the first five people yep. you know um uh, or you know opening up your calendar for an afternoon and just being like anyone that's interested in you know also doing like an faq session you know these are things that like are quite good for for qualifying people that you know um and and yeah you don't say oh well i've got an entire day free who wants to chat with me you say mm. i've only got 10 spots you know you yeah. have to limit your time and, you know, and i usually got, charge you know hey yeah usually or I if you buy the program you know? today you'll get a, a one-on-one um coaching call with me mm. on top of the group program or you know so it's it's stuff like that that it's like looking at what people would really really want from you you know and then giving it to them but only if they kind of like well because it's it's a good option where if you don't want to drop the price you can sort of say hey look you know here's my course it's 500 bucks you can buy it at 500 bucks anytime go on my course now buy go on my website now it's 500 bucks but if you register today on on top of this course you're also going to get all this stuff here that's done for you if you jump off this webinar you can buy the course tomorrow that's fine but you won't get this the extra and I'm yeah, also going to throw kind of in yeah. yeah what we're talking about and it is about setting limitations as well around your program so just be like mm. oh it's not like I'm accepting everyone and anyone like no I'm accepting only these kinds of people that want this result in this time frame and um I'm own, I've only got 10 spaces you know I mean I know it's mm. kind of weird because you are trying to sell as many as possible <laughs> but you'll have much more success if you basically say, you know I have that sense of like yeah there is only 10 spots yeah. So, yeah, yeah I mean, really these are just tips was... and tricks. You can play around with it. You don't have to use any of them or you can use all of them. It's just, it's just to be aware of, of I mean, it's that thing like Jono said, like it's people will not buy, um, you know, unless there is a real reason mm. to buy and there is a sense of urgency. Today. You, know? yeah. you have to kind of get people off their, <laughs> off their chairs to actually take action, which is a bit of a, a you know, well, a big thing to get people to do sometimes. Well, then I'll tell you a story as well, right? And this, this probably won't work for everyone at this stage here, but the point I was going to make was even if you say, hey, I've only got 10 spots, you know, um, because I want to keep, I give a lot of one-on-one support. I'm going to follow up with everyone. Can't do more than 10. You can do the generic version all the time, you know, but for this mm-hmm. one here, it's 10 here. And really, if you get 11 or 12, you know, no one's going to shoot matter. you. Nobody yeah. actually knows. Yeah, <laughs> no one actually day. knows. And you know what I mean? And you could even tell them, hey, I usually take 10, but look, you know, don't tell anyone, look, I'll accept you as the 11th person or whatever. And like, yeah. no one's going to shoot you because you got 12 people instead of 10, you know? Mm-hmm. And even, um, do you know Jeff Walker? La- Jeff Walker launch? Uh, so he's oh. a he's one of the the OGs from the launch world. His name's Jeff okay. Walker. He wrote a book on on launch, and he's all cool. about hey, you launch it at this time here, and then you close the cart. You know, nice. I, I stumbled yeah. across him. I read his book. I followed his stuff. I was going to do a launch. I'm like, I got to do this program. I went on his yeah. website, and it's like you know the launch is, is started last week or something. You know, um, it, but you've missed out. But click here to to join on go on the wait list for the next one. I'm like, man, so disappointed. I so wanted to to do that program, you know, but I, so I put my name on the the wait list, and then like the next day, I get an email. They're like, hey, Jono, you know, look, you you missed it. Actually, it started last week, um, but we allow people in the 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 second week, so you don't have to wait another six months. Um, but it is an extra five hundred dollars. Did you want to do it? I did it for the extra five hundred, you know. So um, they even, got you good, they man. They did, yeah, and they got me with that system. It's probably because, the whole thing is staged, you know what I mean? It. Like it's it's yeah. probably their entire model. And, is and I think they, I think they got me with numbers as well. Hey, we can fit one more person in, you know. Um, but it's yeah. an extra five hundred, even if it was, I don't know, maybe it was real, maybe it wasn't. But they got me with that, you know, where it's like yeah. I just wanted to do it so badly, and I, I at least had the impression. Where if I didn't sign up now and pay that extra five hundred dollars, yeah. I would have to wait eight weeks. 
and I'm like, no, no, I would prefer, I, I've got the, the, the trust in this person, you know, I'm, I'm going to do it. Whether it was real or not, I don't know. Yeah, um, yeah. But it was a good program. People are master marketers, right? And, but yeah. It's like, <laughs> exactly. Well, hey, I, I want to be respectful of, of your time there, Kat. So we might end the, the podcast here, but we'll see if anyone's got any questions. So I'm going to end the podcast.